Okay, we're live again. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to another of our Popo's interview series. And the whole point of this uh, Popo's interview series is just to ask questions about Popo's. What does that look like for a lot of guests that will be coming on? Hi, hi, welcome. Hi, I'll just wait for um, people to join in. Hi, Olushe. Hi, Vivian. Hi, welcome. So I'm just going to invite Olushe here on stage. So welcome, Olushe. Hello. Okay, so did I invite on stage? I think I did. There we go. Awesome. And she's here. Hi. Hello. How are you doing today? <laughs> How good. are you doing? I'm doing good. It's been a very uh, refreshing morning. I feel like every time I wake up a little bit earlier than everybody else, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We all need that extra time. We need that extra time. Hi, Abiba. Oh. Hi. Hi, Lola. Welcome. Hi, how is this? How are you? Mm. Hi, Vivian. Ready for... Vivian also. Yeah, just waiting for more people to join before mm -hmm. we invite our guest on stage. <laughs> I'm excited to have today's conversation because I have questions. Vivian, mm -hmm. I hope you're ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm ready to learn. I have my pen. I have my book. I want to take notes and learn. You could, it's amazing how much you can learn from even someone else's story and someone else's journey and so much inspiration and encouragement you can get from there as well. Mm. So I think we just wait one more minute for people to join because I know Instagram would notify more people. <laughs> and then and then we'll just have our guests come on stage. Um, if you're part of our Instagram page, you see that we have a guest today. Her name is Vivian. And when I bring her on stage, she'll go ahead and introduce herself. Okay. Oh, yeah. The minute is over. We're going to get started. So this is another, I don't want to call it episode, but this is just another conversation we're having today. And it's about Purpose Interview Series. And we started on Monday and it's running from Monday right until Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 5 p.m. Uh, West African Time. And I think like everybody else can do the conversion of the time. But those three times, we just take note of it. That'll be awesome. So what we've been doing is we're having conversations around purpose. And what does that really mean? And questions around how did you find your purpose? How's the journey been? What have you learned along the way? What are the tips? And, you know, tips, tricks <laughs> you can share with the audience so that we can all just kind of enjoy this journey of purpose and today we have an amazing amazing woman that's joining us and we're going to be asking a couple of questions so i'm just going to invite her on stage vivian um there we go Alrighty. how is everybody's doing how is everybody's wednesday can you believe it's wednesday already i i feel like sunday was just yesterday how is everybody's wednesday coming along Okay. Right. Hey, hold on. Okay, no problem. The like, camera switched on me. Oh, hi. Hi. hi, Vivian. I love the hat. Ah, Thank okay, you. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so you. Good. Hi, good to have you. Good to have you, Vivian. Thank you for joining us and coming to share your story. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. Okay. Sorry, I'm just giving waves and welcoming everybody in the guest. No problem. Okay. No problem. We, we have like about an hour just to have conversations around purpose. Okay. And okay. Uh, living boldly, we believe that everybody has a purpose here on earth. Like you're called for a reason. And I feel like every human, the struggle is always trying to find that purpose. Everybody's on that journey, like, and trying to find that purpose. One minute you think you have it all nailed down and then the next minute something else happens and then you're like, let's revisit this whole situation. <laughs> so so we, we're living boldly. We just believe that look, you need to be equipped with the right resources and the right tools and community and mentorship and coaching to help yeah. you not only find the purpose, but also be able to walk confidently in that purpose. Because yeah. it can be a tough journey sometimes. So <laughs> the whole purpose of this... Um, 
Can you, did you see that? The whole purpose? The whole purpose of this. <laughs> I was going to say the whole purpose of this purpose interview series. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would have worked. That's I know, okay. right? It, it was just a lot of purpose in one sentence. <laughs> but just like, just kind of showcase, you know, people like you that, you know, I know that you've gone through like a major transition. And I remember when I said, I'm like, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, have you come here, share your journey so far right up to now. And we just asked like a couple of questions just to kind of guide the whole conversation. But okay. it's an open conversation. We're listening. We're all here. Okay. So uh, I think I'm just going to jump right in to say, hey, go ahead and introduce yourself because I know you're okay. a multi-talented woman. <laughs> so my name thank you so much for having me what you guys are doing is just completely beautiful living boldly and then the uh, mom's university thank you so much for putting something so amazing together for not just a woman with the mom but the living boldly i think all of us need to be able to do that uh, i'm sort of living that right now so thank you so much for just following the leading um to do this and to inspire people and thanks for having me um, <laughs> so my name is Vivian Alebio Koje and I am a mom of two boys I'm married I've been married for 13 years uh, a little bit about me I started my publishing company 13 years ago as a new mom because I was I didn't want to leave my kid at the hands of like a daycare provider or a nanny so I decided to just do something which was uh, publishing because I love to write and it's sort of one of those things that fell on me. I didn't really think I was at a publishing company, but someone, I helped someone that suggested starting when I made my first thousand dollar, you know, check from helping someone write a book. So I thought, oh, okay, why not? And I, I did. Um, and over the years, it's been, you know, ups, ups and downs, but it's been amazing. Um, over the years as well, it was one of those dreams or businesses that I had that I sort of put on the back. Although it was my main like way to make money, I wanted to do something bigger. I wanted to be on Forbes magazine and invent something spectacular and just be known as this amazing person. And God is like, you have something in your hand that has been sustaining you all these years. And uh, you keep overlooking that. So until I think a few years ago, I sort of took my publishing business seriously. Um, and But I was still sort of uh, dabbling into other talents and dreams that I had. I wanted to conquer the world. But just it kept eluding me. Uh, no matter how much money and time and amazing it was creating something spectacular, it just never worked out. And the only thing that's ever worked was my publishing. Um, and the beginning of this year, a lot of things changed. And we'll get into that. Uh, more, but I publish books, I write books, um, I also just started a, a global marketplace for authors and freelancers to sort of connect, uh, which is still in line with publishing, um, and run a nonprofit organization called Bright of Hope. Yeah. Thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you. And thank you thank for you. You know, joining us. So I, I just think like the first place I want to start from, because I think the questions will be going between myself and Alusha. Yeah. Um, well, Alusha is my co-founder here on Living Boldly. And she's a certified clarity coach. And she has a long resume. So that's the summary of the resume. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll take the first question. And I think that's always the big one. Like for you, I mean, what would you say is the definition of purpose? Like when you hear the word purpose, what does that mean to you? Aligning yourself with the reasons why you were created. Um, to me, I think everyone has a reason why they're here. Like, they, you're not an accident. God didn't just create you and just say, okay, come and just populate the earth, eat food, get married, have kids, and die, right? I think there's a reason why we're here to be co-creators. Um, and whether in business and whatever else, there's a purpose why you're here. There's a reason why you're here. It could be as as um, insignificant in your eye as being a mom to your children and taking care of them and being a housewife to, you know, take care of your family. It could be as big as, you know, being the head of a church or an organization or running a coaching company and leading people to align with their destiny or their calling. And so everyone has a reason why they're here. 
Um, so that's really what purpose is, just aligning yourself with the reasons why you were created. Wow. Okay. I think that's like, okay. So thank you everybody for joining us today. We'll, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just wrap up right here because the, the moment you're able to align yourself, you know, because when I hear the word align, I see that in some cases there can be a uh, misalignment. Is that the word? I think I use it right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And then you can be on that journey and just having fun and loving it, but that may not exactly be the reason why you're here. Or that may yeah. not be the season that you should be in. Or yeah. we linger along for a while in a season just because we're afraid to step into the next <laughs> Exactly. So, so it's just realigning yourself. And you can start right now. You don't have to yeah. think, okay, now I need to, I like, look at, Nikki, I hear you. I know that I should realign myself. Let me just give it a week. Or let me start on Monday. Don't worry. Make today Monday. Make this minute Monday. It doesn't have to be Monday. What's so special about Monday? Anyway? So yeah, make it now. So I just passed it on to Alicia. I don't know if I have any uh, another question for her. Yeah, I, I think that while she was speaking, I was just thinking about what she said, which is that she was never able to create something spectacular. And so I want to I want to pick it up from there because I, I yeah. it seems like a lot of us are waiting for something spectacular before yeah. we actually make a move right and yeah. i was thinking when you were speaking i was thinking about the fact that you said you know you look overlook what was in your hands um mm -hmm. which is what a lot of us do right so i was just linking it to what we've been talking about like even in the last week about moses the rod of moses stuff uh, in the hands of moses which was his everyday occupation like yeah it was not anything extraordinary but just his everyday <laughs> occupation tool but yes. he was there overlooking it and seeing it as well. It's just one of those things yes. that he didn't realize that God was going to use that as, you know, when God invades that ordinary, it can become spectacular, right? Yes. And that's where we are. So I just want to take it up from there, which is, you know, just, if, I don't know if you could just share some of your um, experience around yeah. just taking the ordinary and making it spectacular it's spectacular um you know your, your own journey maybe like personal examples of how mm -hmm. you've been able to take that thing that god has put in your hands yeah and you've just taken it into you know making it spectacular because god has not invaded it yeah yes so um it's it's funny that you said that with moses i think back to everyone that god used in the bible from david um to joseph's ability to dream to um even peter like paul who was who loved arguing and 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 you know like <laughs> doing like really being like this is very passionate and and peter who was a fisherman to, uh, to become a fishers of man uh to david who was a shepherd and then he was brought up to lead uh, so God uses the ordinary things that we're overlooking even with Joseph with his dreams and just many dreams and God is like this is what I'm going to use eventually to elevate you and so some of the things that we think we just naturally are good at so naturally I'm great with kids I love being around kids kids tend to just sort of I don't know love hanging with me and then i teenagers as well then i love cooking and serving i love serving um and that comes in different ways either through just a simple meal um either just encouraging words um if you go through my social media page most of it is always sort of like just encouraging and just letting people know that you can do more and you can do better and and just encouraging them because i know life can be hard and I just thought I loved doing those things. Even my since I was eight or nine, I wrote my first um, no, I think book. I would say I won't call it a novel at the age of nine. Um, Adventures of an Orphan. And then before then, I wrote for Bazooka Joe. Uh, I don't know if you remember Bazooka oh, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> I was eight or thereabout. So there was this always, when God called me January 30th to, be, uh, to purchase a hundred acre land to start the Bread of Hope, um, God, one of, the, one of the things that God said was, didn't you connect the dots? If you look back at your life, there's always something, there are breadcrumbs pointing to your purpose. There are breadcrumbs pointing to it. So it's either you see it, and, you know, let me say this, and back to your question, all the things that I was doing, I was so busy with so many things. Remember the scripture where Jesus came and Martha and Mary 
they were trying to chill and Martha was just yeah, yeah. Martha is you like, know, like yeah, these people. people yeah yes yeah. and we're so busy that was me yeah. I was busy. and and Jesus was like you are busy with you you're anxious about too many things and people would say me, oh, you're multi-talented. And the devil really used that to distract me from what God wanted me to do, you know. And there were great things. And you know the amazing thing, though? God now is using some of those ideas within the umbrella of this nonprofit that he, uh, that he called me to, this ministry that he called me to. Then he, you know, he's like, I didn't give you those ideas for you to do. It wasn't for now. It wasn't even for you. You were trying to build things that are not for you to build right now. And a lot of us are building and building. And it's 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 natural because we're creators, just like the creator God. We are we want to create and we want to do, but sometimes God is like, slow down. You know, there is a greater purpose for this, there's a greater plan for this. If only you can see it. And so many things would distract you from seeing it. And for years, I don't know how many years, over 25, 20, let me just say 30 years, really, of my life. I'm 43. I was just wondering, just like I was a wanderer, just sort of, oh, okay, this is cool. I could do this. And because I was talented, it was so easy to fall into the traps of wanting to constantly do, to keep myself busy, to keep, and I was a creative. And so, oh, you can cook and you can sing and you can do this and you can create and you can. And so it was for me also a way to prove myself that I was just this amazing person and God is like, calm down. And so when God cre gave me this um, bread of hope, I couldn't create anything. My hands were up. I was like, that's like, I woke up that morning I saw a message and God said, it's your fault that this kid's on the street. I, I was like, no, we're not doing this today. I have plans. You know, I have this money in the bank and I want to open this and I want to do this. In fact, I was trying to open a restaurant in Dayton, Ohio in January. The wow. landlord had already sent me the paperwork to sign. I'd already hired a restaurant consultant, paid thousands to the restaurant consultant that was on not refundable. This process started since September of last year. I created this menu. It was gonna be go chop and it was gonna be like Chipotle but African style. And I was like, finally, you know, <laughs> this is life. And God is like, shut up. But that's the no. only help for you. you turn around. <laughs> And oh anytime I was trying to sign that final document, something held me back. And I didn't understand it. I just thought I had jitters and uh, maybe I was scared. And But then I didn't understand until a week, no, two weeks later when God called me to this. Um, and I think about that two weeks was when the landlord said, oh, we give the, the space to somebody else. I was like, okay. And I had peace, but I didn't understand why I had peace because I'd already spent, I had a $11,000 bill from the restaurant consultants in which a, a majority of it was paid already, which was non-refundable. And I sat there when God said, the reason why this kid's on the street is your fault. I called a friend and I said, I don't understand this. And she said, listen more, God is probably trying to call you to do something. Um, and we prayed I remember crying because I heard him clearly and I was like, not now. Like it could be any time. It could be next year. Like I had plan like I have things that I want to do. And he's like, it's now. And he said, buy a hundred acre land in Ibadan. I'm, I'm from Kogi state. I'm in <laughs> Kabagel. Like I, I've never been to Ibadan. I've driven past it. But I was like, why? You know, and and he's like, and call call it the city of hope and take kids off the street, at risk kids, help the children, get, give them a place to sleep, education, um, help them grow. And he gave me the name. He gave me everything to the detail of what should be on the land, where it should be placed, the kind of garden to be there every single thing he showed me the land before i saw the land from the mountain over there to everything it was a mind-blowing transforming experience and i remember the same friend that uh, prayed with me the next day said god told me to send you fifty thousand um, dollars 
who I was just calling, and I was like, "What?" I remember flinging my phone because it was just too. It was a lot. Um, it was a lot. And then God is okay. Send a million naira to this person. Send this to this orphanage. And it was. I was okay. God, we're trying. You're sending me on a message, but you want to empty my account. So that's the plan. And you know, yes, the account got empty. You know, from over ninety something thousand, the account got empty because he's like, you're still leaning on your own strength. Uh, wow. Because the t- and, and I'm going back to the fact that I'm always strategizing how to get things done. Mm-hmm. And in mm-hmm. order for God to use me, it had to be that I couldn't take credit for anything. Mm-hmm. So it would have been easy for me to be here. So yeah you know then i had this margin <laughs> mm-hmm. you know i just went and i just paid the check and everything was uh-huh. perfect you know and 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 elevate myself um and god is like there's no sense of self here this is not about you so your purpose is not about you um i would dream about the kids i would dream about there was a particular girl i kept dreaming about um i remember god now said buy a ticket go to nigeria so march i bought a ticket that day um, to leave. Uh, thank God for a very uh, patient and amazing understanding husband. And I was, and I said, okay, maybe I'll send the kids to Houston. I went, it was, thank God it was sort of um, a short ho- holiday period. They had like a uh, spring break or something. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I went to Nigeria for the first time to Ibadan, went to a school because God kept mentioning a school, um, no school, a town called Okiare. I don't know where that is. Apparently, wow. with research, I found out that there was a, a, a place called Okiare. So I had to go there. And I I went to see the land, went to see the place. And I saw the same land I saw in my dreams. Wow. So I was like, I'm well, not crazy. This has to be God. So, I mean, nothing. I didn't do anything. Even looking for the land God said, ask your husband. My husband is from Edo State, doesn't, but then we found out that he had a friend from Ibadan who was an architect. So he now started looking for the land. So God wanted me to just do this the way he wanted to do it, like not the way I wanted to do it. So our purpose sometimes we're trying to implement things and it's not working. Yeah. It's because God is like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I know I called you to this, but chill out. Mm-hmm. So there were instances where I had to just wait. Mm-hmm. I would sit and just go to say, okay, um, watch, watch the story about George Mola. Watch the story about Mother Teresa. And I would hear this things, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, God, what are we doing? I, I had all these plans. What are we doing? And he's like, wait. So I had months of waiting. Mm-hmm. I had months of just listening and then connecting the dots. Mm-hmm. Um, until I think a month ago when I took three days off to just pray and just listen to him. I didn't even have the programs we we're going to. I didn't know the programs we we're going to do with the kids. I just knew buy a hundred acre land. So when when what I'm saying is when God sends you on an assignment, hmm. and when it's when your purpose, when it's evident that it's time for your purpose to mater- materialize, hmm. um, He will connect the dots for you. Those skills, those ordinary things, now become extraordinary. They become things that I used to do for my church. I didn't even think about it. Things I used to do for other people. I was not able to just do them. You know, we're able to get grants with, with uh, Google for, I think, I don't even know how much, like $10,000 a month ad grant um, and so many other things that are just sort of like, it just seems easy to get, but it's not easy. Like, it's not an overnight thing. I've been doing it for so many years without really realizing it. <laughs> And yeah, so let me stop there. I don't know if you guys have another question. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Well, you know what? Thank you so been, much. I've wow. been taking notes. I've been, exactly. you know, I know the you've been doing, there's been a lot of truth bombs. And I'm yeah. going to say, honestly, when the first thing you said was when God said, didn't you connect the dots? I had mm-hmm. goose, goosies all over me. Like, yeah. I just like, yeah, that, that is it. Because yeah. most of the time we see a dot. And then we think that's the dots. Then we sit on the dots. <laughs> yeah. And we walk on the dots. And we don't even know. Yeah. That it's, uh, just keep connecting it, right? And I wanted to say something, you know, about you that maybe some of the audience didn't really know about. Because I know you just came on and just kind of introduced yourself. So, no, just me. So this lady right here, she's a TEDx speaker. And she's, she's a food enthusiast. 
enough that in our TEDx talk, you can look it up on YouTube, she actually had, she was pounding yam on stage, literally. And then she talked about food. <laughs> Let me, so that's how much she was on that part, right? And then the yeah. second thing was, I remember we have had conversations, I think it was last year, when you were telling me about you writing a cookbook. And she was doing this yeah. amazing research, like it was going to be phenomenal, like about this cookbook. Yeah. Uh, she's talking yeah. she's talked to me about opening up a resort place where we can elevate the African culture. You know, she has like things that, you know, whenever I talk to her, she's talking about what she's working on. I'm just like, hmm, okay. Wow, people are doing big things. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> people are doing big things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and I remember that all of a sudden on Facebook, I just saw your post. I think it was January this year when I saw your hope. I saw Bread of Hope. I was like, Bread of Hope. Am I missing something? How? Where? <laughs> How? We're yeah. talking about book and, I mean, sorry, we're talking about cookbook. We're talking about how we can bring the African culture and food. And, you know, I was like, okay, I'm missing something. Of and then course. to hear you yeah. even say that you're even going to go ahead and start a restaurant, yeah. you know, and you've paid, you've put money into it. I'm thinking, you know, sometimes oh, like, yeah. yeah, I found the dots. I'm going to sit on these dots. And God is like, yeah. no, no. Yeah, oh, wow. it, it's wow. not for wow. you to sit on. It's not for you. I mean, incorporated, trademark, the whole nine yards. Um, and I'm talking about dreams, you know, like I bought lands. I, bought, I mean, I, it, <laughs> let's just say um, God will mess up your plan <laughs> to make his plan stand, especially yeah. if this 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 plan is to propagate something it could be for one child this whole theme this my whole life being turned upside down could just be for one child that i've never met that i haven't seen but god will mess up your plan i don't care if you you sink in a million dollars and he's like bye bye I don't care if you have that contract and they're going to pay you a gazillion dollars he's like nope it's not part. so I was busy, just like a child, you you know, you give a child a toy. It's like, I want you, they're holding on to this toy. Mm. And God is like, ah, I have bigger things for you, right? So we're always holding on to toys, you know, because it looks big, it looks pretty. Fancy. But God is like, ah, what I have for you is kind of dirty. You know, it's a lot of getting down to the dirty and, and getting the real work done. It's not glamorous. Nobody's trying to put you on ferbs. You're not going to be in Silicon <laughs> Valley. You're not inventing anything. But that little child, I remember when we went to Okiare, when I, I picked up, I went, I got there. Um, and the kids, 455 children, um, I had prepared this little packs of things for them. And the smile on their faces when they sang for me. And God is like, see, this is it. And I had more. I was, that was the first time I'll go to Nigeria and be at peace. Hmm. That was the first time I'll be on a plane and I wasn't scared that the plane will crash because I was walking in purpose. I was like, God, you're sending me. And I haven't even started yet. Hmm. And that was the first time I would walk the street and i wouldn't be afraid typically my going to nigeria you 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 know like you're you're just worried maybe something crazy would happen yeah, this there, was, there was no single worry and one of the things that happened the land we were supposed to purchase um the people didn't show up so we ended up the land we have now it wasn't the first one i went to see in Ibadan, but it's it's next door to it it's like right it's the same land, but it's, there's no divide, really. It's just, it's right there. But it, it was weird how I prayed for that land. Um, sorry, a call was coming in. How I prayed for the land that I thought wouldn't be mine, because when we found out that those people were trying to steal from us, mm -hmm. my typical self last year, I would have gone off and I would have been saying a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I was in the lawyer's office and I said, when they said, oh, they didn't show up and I'd already spent almost two million naira on all the logistics, obviously flying to Nigeria to see this land and every other thing. I just said, it is well, let us pray. My sisters were like, this can be Vivian. Um, I think it was that moment they realized that, okay, there's purpose here. It's not about, because if, if it was about Vivian, 
somebody would have been hearing something that day. Like, we, we would have had some conversations, some words will be thrown out, <laughs> some bombs will be thrown, and everybody in that little office would have known there's a girl Some from America that we pray. <laughs> but when we prayed and we left, I had peace because God knew that that was actually still the same place I was getting my land. It was the same exact place. It was just a different family that owned it. So, because I was like, well, I prayed for someone's land and I saw the mountain and I, God is like, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, when God calls you, it's easy. The devil will try to distract you. And all of us, we have a calling. We have some, they may look like something else for someone else. Um, but we keep, the devil will distract you. Good things will distract you. You may distract yourself too because you're too busy um, and you're not listening and you're not connecting the dots. So once I started connecting the dots, I was like, I've always worked with youth. I used to do vacation Bible school, and I used to do all these things, but I just thought I loved doing it. And now it makes sense. And you know the beauty? My life is much more aligned. <laughs> I'm less stressed. Um, I used to be all over the place. You don't know, you know, one day is Miss Mop. I had a, a mob during the pandemic. I used to flip out and I gave it a I gave it life. We created scripts. We, we were writing a book. I wanted to do all these things and I just loved creating. Mm. Um, but now my life just makes so much sense. Um, mm. And all those things that I used to love doing, God is now sort of weaving it together and connecting the dots. So, yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this. Like, I, you know, just yeah. listening to you is like, okay, okay. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like my question would now be, and just being, you know, transparent, like, did you ever yeah. experience fear in the journey? How did you handle that? So, in the beginning, my question was, why me? Mm. <laughs> and and why now? Because mm -hmm. again, I told you I had a stash. I had planned. You know, you know when you get, you have this stash, are you like, ah, hey, <laughs> one bar, we're about yeah. to do some, we're about to take this place down. <laughs> <We're> about... <laughs> so I think in the beginning I was scared, but then God was constantly. I was open to hear, right, and. My friend has said something that they said, the first thing is to accept. Mm. Mm. Accept that he's leading you to this. So once I accepted, I wasn't so much afraid as to just, I was more of like, why now type thing. But then I kept feeling like if I don't do it now, that was it. You know, when we procrastinate about doing something it's it's sort of like an arrogant belief that god has or god owes us tomorrow to make to to allow us to get things done uh when we procrastinate is like we feel like we own our lives and we control tomorrow when we choose not to do what god wants us to do now today um it's it's just sort of like a slap because god can't come down from heaven and and do this thing. So he's using us as his hands and his feet and his brain to get this work done. So we're just sort of like, if you look at ants, you have the queen and then you have the little ants just doing all the work. Mm -hmm. That's sort of how I look at it. And for me, it wasn't much of the fear. It was just, I had plans. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us have plans. So for me, I had to just let go and just say, God, I'm all in. And once I said, God, I'm all in, things just began to shift for me. Um, and I just had this peace. I don't know. I can't explain the peace that I, and then God was, the, the time when I was silent, and when he was silent, he was connecting me to watch certain things, to listen to certain messages. Um, so I learned about Mother Teresa and how she bought a land. I didn't even know she bought a land. And she said something that God told me to hold on to. Uh, and the, what she said when she, she she was looking for a land, she told the architect. She said, um, "If the land is not ready, if the if if the land is ready, 
um, let me make sure I, I say it right. If the land is ready, then God is ready. Something like that. If the land is not ready, it means God isn't ready. So God wanted me to hold on to that. So every time the architects would call me and say, oh, well, we haven't, because at first they said, there's no way in this world I'll find a hundred acre land in a battle. Like there's no way. And I said, well, if the, if God wants me to get a hundred acre land, that's what we'll get. And it's in a battle. And when, when he's ready, he'll make it available. And that was what happened. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Okay. You know, as you were speaking, I was just thinking about, <laughs> I mean, different things going on in my mind. And I was thinking about the fact that, you know, what she said earlier about sometimes you're too invested on a path mm -hmm. that it becomes such a big deal to turn around. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I feel like, I mean, I put all of my life savings in this thing. Like, well, I, don't turn around. I don't want to turn around. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but if I we're going to walk the path of purpose, God didn't say. It was going to be, you know, sometimes we think that, oh, because it's a path of purpose, therefore it will be easy, right? Or it will be easy to mm. pivot. It's not going to be easy to pivot. You may need yeah. to, to shed some things. You may need to suffer some personal losses. Yeah. You may need yeah. to, <laughs> I mean, be, yeah. people are going to just judge you and say, what? Is oh, yeah. Okay? Is she oh, yeah. okay? What's going on with her? Is she fine? Are you confused? Is it life crisis? You know? Is it really life crisis? Twice you know? if you're okay. <laughs> like, is everything okay? You know, and I was just thinking about what you said, and and then I was just thinking that, I mean, looking at what about procrastination, being ready, procrastinating, and those two things is what I wanted to kind of like hammer on, um, which is God has asked me to pivot. Now I'm ready to pivot. I'm ready in my head, <laughs> you know, but I have not allowed my head to connect to my heart and to mm. my feet to actually move. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, oh, I need to, I still need to be ready, you know? What yeah. do I need to learn? Do I need to go and do a course about running a home for children? I mean, and then we get stuck on those things. We get stuck yeah. on, oh, I'm just trying to get ready. Yeah. Um, and God is saying, and, and I love what you said about procrastination. You assume yeah. that you have tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Who do you have tomorrow? No, That's you don't. Why. Who do mm -hmm. you have tomorrow? Right? And so I just want to ask you that question around, how, how did you do that? You know, like, because I knew you were saying, oh, God was leading you to watch certain things and all that. How yeah. did you know that, okay, now I'm done watching these things. <laughs> now it's, it's time to actually just get up and go to Nigeria yeah. and actually make that move. I'm done watching. I'm done preparing. I yeah. Get up and, and now move. Yeah. How did you, you know, have that balance? How did I get that? Yeah. So when, if God calls you, he would equip you and give you direction, right? So in the beginning, <clears throat> this was my favorite thing. Like I carried it everywhere. I don't care where I was going. I was, you know, I would just write. Um, I would write. Well, I think I have it the other way. Sorry. <laughs> I would write from dreams to what he's telling me to to listen to, and then it by. Let me tell you what month it sort of stopped. I mean, I have some that are like completely mm, yeah. full. Yeah. Um. Then. Things sort of stopped. I stopped hearing direct instructions July 13th. Wow. And not because, and, and at first I was concerned. I was like, okay, God, is it, what was going on? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not hearing again. You're not telling me what to do again. Um, and God just, there was just nothing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, shortly after, I heard just wait. So sometimes it's just as simple as waiting. You know, we don't, we always, when we get a new idea, the way I used to do, the first thing I'm buying a domain name, oh my goodness, I don't know how much. You're, you're my, <laughs> yeah. You're my first name. <laughs> Let's lock that down first. www. <laughs> Um, like go go daddy and, and name cheap I've suffered from my hand because I think there was a year I bought like maybe twenty domains. Yeah. Because I'm like, hmm, okay, this is this is a good name. Even Miss Mop had a domain. Like I had domain for every idea, right? Um then some I'll start doing these and then it's like it was just me running ahead of myself. And none of those things I was even supposed to be doing at that time. Um, some I needed to wait. So for Bread of Hope, it was more like I only listened to stuff when God wanted me to. Yeah. And sometimes I'm watching maybe random something on TV and it points to Bread of Hope. Mm 
mm-hmm. someone is saying something and a word will come so i was constantly learning it may not be just you know for some and then after we launched out and we set up the website god now said go start on grants find out more about grants find out more about this and immediately i found out i said okay learn and so i started finding sites that taught me how to like a university for non-profit organizations yeah. to learn how to write grants how to connect with donors and all of that and that was how we were able to access a microsoft grant for over $100,000 like in in all their software mm-hmm. and hardware and then the google grant and then the amazon smile and all those things we were able to get and all those were within a week mm-hmm. of me just sort of like letting god lead me to know what to do and not me just trying to find out things my by myself mm-hmm. and god now sort of this past two weeks god is like well we're still waiting on the land we're supposed to do the not the land but to do the fencing mm-hmm. um i wanted to travel across africa and meet these kids um so that's what god is is speaking mm-hmm. now for the past mm-hmm. two weeks um and said okay call this person so sometimes it would even lead me to call or or mm-hmm. message a person to get um information or to learn um and god will constantly direct you if you are listening uh, so some of us who are not listening we we're busy trying to make things happen on our own because we're so smart and we have degrees you know yeah. and we're western <laughs> we're well connected <laughs> the bible says you know the foolishness of like like man in the mm. heart of a man is foolishness already mm. like even in the wisest state of a man he is as foolish as can be and we need a god who obviously created the universe and the earth and created you and I to really uh, direct our fears and mm. and it's as simple as praying to him mm. and even when i'm overwhelmed and i can't pray i just write down my thoughts and i just speak in my heart like god lead me i don't know what i'm doing i'm so clueless mm. so for the first time i'm honestly just so clueless cuz i've never gotten a 100 acre land before in my entire life it's not even a dream i've never dreamt it like i've dreamt <laughs> some crazy stuff <laughs> but i've never dreamt this like um i've dreamt of some stuff um uh, but not this um and so for me it's just really daily listening and if god is not directing me to do anything i just wait wow i just wait. wow yeah. so, I, so just, i hear you i hear you say you know just be led by god's spirit that's when you will know that's it what you should be doing are you supposed yeah. to be praying now are you supposed to be calling somebody now Yes. And I think that as there's no o oh, a has to go before b. Mm. Just follow. Just <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, and, and I love how you said you are not clueless because sometimes that's the best place to be at because God has not got you in your corner. There's no <laughs> o oh, you know my past degrees or my past experiences you're not going to be leveraging on any past experiences what no. past experiences you've never done this before no. and that's when the humility comes you could be like oh yeah. i don't know um, do. yeah. i don't know where else yeah. i just have yeah. to allow god to be the one to lead me exactly and that's such a big deal right there yeah yeah and wow. it's just a, a peaceful way to live honestly cuz typically mm. it, it reads me of anxiety Yeah. You know, like I used to be so anxious like, oh, oh I got to do this. Oh, and it once I post it, you know, I have to make sure I have this many likes. Like I don't I'm just living I'm just living boldly. Like I'm just like Thank I don't you. care. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't I don't care if I share the story of a child and and no one likes it. No, I'm sharing as God is leading. If yeah. if I and 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 to inspire others and I'm I don't care if if I have to preach 10 times a day and I hear a word from God and I share it and you don't like it I mm-hmm. it, it, it were concerned about me in the beginning especially my intellectual friends like Vivian are you okay I'm like <laughs> yes I'm fine um, <laughs> and I would meet you if I meet anybody and they say oh what do you do oh you know i heard a clarion call on january 30th i published books but god is leading me to do this and they're like oh interesting i don't care if you're a christian i don't care if you understand what clarion call is i don't care if you know god or love god or don't care i'm like this is me you take it you leave it god bless you and that's it so i feel love this gives us when you in, in purpose you walk boldly 
Mm-hmm. You're not afraid because you like this, honestly. I tell God like this is not my job. Like we're supposed to finish. We didn't pay the landowner all the money when we purchased the 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 land. The, the God even told me the exact price of the land. By mm-hmm. the way, I forgot mm-hmm. to answer that. And what we will pay for the land. So, but anyway, um, the land ended up being the fifty thousand plus extra, almost like fifty nine thousand dollars for the hundred acre land. And then some other expenses, you know, Nigeria and everybody will try to milk you yeah. um, of stuff. Sorry, and I don't want to put my people out there like that. <laughs> but we had instances where people were just thinking, ah, a big woman, she wants to buy a house. I know it's big God, or God wants to buy a land. Is it that you're in or you're out, you know? Yeah. And and there will be some people that will say, oh, you're supposed to spend it. This land is 80 something thousand. No, although we have that, but God said, I won't spend more than this range. Because I had it. It was so specific. Yeah. Even so, the name Bread of Hope was so specific. I wasn't coming up with a name. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the energy to come up with a name. So God gave everything. And things are, were aligned for me to get those things done. And it's interesting that God chose Bread of Hope because mm-hmm. I love food and I love cooking. and yeah. Curry. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, 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 So it's interesting. So I think God sort of just, uh, and I love giving hope. So I don't mm-hmm. know. God can, again, connect mm-hmm. the dots. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just this peace when you listen to him. Mm. And you're not trying to figure things out on your own. Um, mm. And you, you just say, God, I'm all in. I'm ready to live boldly. Mm. I, in, 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 in a year, like a year ago, I would never think of, I want to pick up and go to 10 or 15 countries in Africa. Yeah. To, to see kids on the street. Like, what? What? <laughs> you know? What? You know? Mm. And, and my boldness was so limited to... To me, when I'm talking, I'm not, I wasn't as bold, I, but, you know, I would, <laughs> you know, like, hard guy, hard guy. But, no, <laughs> there was no hard guy anywhere. I was. <laughs> but now it's wow. hard guy to the things, you know, purpose, really. So. Wow. so living boldly is just basically living on purpose. Like, that's not yeah. it. And but that's the moment it. you catch that vision, you're clear about it, you know it's God, it's easier to move boldly because you're like, you know what? I don't even have to be afraid about anything. God is God has got this. I, no. I have no so whether worries. whether you have everything aligned or not, you're moving. Whether you have the money or not, you're moving. Whether you have yeah. so and, and I listened to a testimony today. Um when my sons go to a Christian private school. The mm-hmm. founder started that school twenty sixty years ago when he was twenty seven. He's eighty seven. Wow. He wow. was there today, my first time meeting him in the assembly because they do chapel the first day of school. And he said when God told him to build a private Christian school, he didn't have any money to do it. But he went to the bank and said, I want this land. This is where we're going to build a Christian school. They gave him paperwork. He signed everything. 3 a.m. in the morning, a couple from in another part of town in Dayton, Ohio, decided that hmm, God is leading us to give this young man $2 million. Huh. To build wow. whatever he's building. They heard it clearly and they gave him a check of $2 million the next day. Um, so when, when I went this morning, I almost missed this thing, actually. So I knew God directed me to go to the school today. I didn't even, I heard the, the, the testimony and I, I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And immediately I heard Bread of Hope, but I didn't. Hmm. And I stepped out of the school and I saw him. And I said, oh, you know, I, I, I ran up to him, very colorful with my pink hat. I had a pink hat and this African <laughs> pink thing. He's probably like, who is this black woman? But um, <laughs> I was like, oh, your testimony. And he said, once God calls you to do something and you do it, he will send the help that you need. Wow. And he wow. said, he said, whatever it is that, you're being told to do, just do it. And it just, it felt like God was just you, like speaking through him. And this mm. is, you know, the man that owns this school. I mean, you have over 5,000 kids. And I mean, it's a huge Christian school. Mm. And he's the founder and he's 87. And I stood there and I was like, yes, this is it. So I haven't, God hasn't said much about Bread of Hope in two weeks, but today he did. Yeah. Mm. Today he did. 
And so when God tells you to do something, don't wait till things are aligned because there would never be like, I remember when my husband and I, when we first got married, money was very, really tight, but we wanted to go to Nigeria mm. and mo I had family and friends that they would want to wait till when they have this fat bank account to travel. But we made plans, we're going to travel. We looked for the cheapest ticket and we found somehow once we made that first move, yeah, we're able to afford to buy that ticket to travel. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've traveled so many times. Sometimes we were dead broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but somehow, we shall have made it to Nigeria for mm -hmm. my kids to see their grandparents, their, yeah. you know, yeah. their cousins yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So that's the same thing with purpose. If you sit down and you're waiting for this big bang thing to happen, my dear, it would not happen. Mm. For me, it was a bit different because I think God has been trying to get my attention for so long. And he just somehow knew that, man, this guy is just own wogbo, just going straight. <laughs> if you do not drag me again. So for me, it was more like he had to do that. But sometimes it's as simple as a word something you see, something you hear, something you read, mm. it just sort of lingers and just never, it doesn't leave your heart. Wow. And, 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 and then you connect the dots and it makes sense. And at that point, just run. Mm. Don't wait. Don't ask. Don't, because start asking people, they will talk you out of your purpose in a yes. second. Yeah. If, maybe, if, if, yeah. if maybe I started calling this cousin or my sister, or something, they said, ah, why you can use that money or something? Why, but you know, that like people there's insecurity. How yes. 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 Why are your people? Mm. Yes, I didn't even tell my mom or my dad. Wow. Like, I didn't, you know, I was pretty much towards the meat of everything before I started now sharing yeah. details. But even still, I was so dug, like, I was like, this is it. I'm not, there's no, because they're thinking, oh, this is one of Vivian's grand ideas. <laughs> she's going to just wake up and change her mind. <laughs> one of them is on this live. I'm sure, like, she's, she, they were probably thinking, ah, Vivian, I'll wake up now. Because I wanted to launch a magazine beginning of this year. I just put in money into that as well. Muse magazine for, for creative. I sent money, hired a team, sunk in dollars, and then I, then this happened, and then mm -hmm. so my sister was like, Okay, maybe this is one of those, it will blow oh. over, <laughs> but it didn't blow over, it can't blow over. Yeah. Um, and 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 so when when you know it's God, mm. when you know in your heart that you're being led, you cannot be distracted. And if the devil tries it, just just look up to God and just ask for strength. Yeah, mm. keep going because it's easy. Like in in the midst of this, God, uh, the devil is trying to say, "Oh, you know, you know, you can do this. You know that thing. God won't. You know, you know, yeah. you can. You still need to make money. You know, yeah. you still need to earn. You still need to do this. The one thing I'm glad Shad God didn't take was my publishing company. <laughs> so because he literally took everything else. Like I had to close down websites. I had to cancel companies. I had to. You know, I had to let go of a lot of things. I had to, like, there were some partnerships that I was creating. I had to tell them, sorry, God called me. And they're like, huh? Mm -hmm. So I had to do all of that. And it was just me dying to self. Um, mm -hmm. It was just, dying to self is not just with sin. D mm -hmm. Dying to self is dying mm -hmm. to your own desires and, yes. and ambitions uh, and, mm -hmm. and things that you, you know, grand ideas. <laughs> you wow. know? <laughs> wow wow <sighs> like i don't even know like <laughs> you know you know i mean i'm inspired more than anybody else i don't know who I'm I'm inspired, inspired. I'm, because i'm like you know the things that i've been asking god i'm like okay god why what are you telling on? i was just telling Nikkei this thing the other day i was like Nikkei, you know what i woke up today i was like crying i was crying to god i was like god what are you doing what's going on here after i finished crying i cl i cleaned my eyes took a shower i'm like okay can we keep yes. moving yeah <laughs> because you know sometimes we think that we're the only ones who god is telling to let go of things of you know of your, you know, some of the things you thought, oh, this is this is it, and God is yeah. saying, no, that's yeah. not it, and so you feel like, why are you doing this to me? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so I don't know if anybody's listening on the call, and you're like, okay, um, I don't know, what is God do doing to me? Maybe that's you, <laughs> and you're like, God, I'm not sure what's going on here, because some people are like that in that situation, and you just yeah. you just feel like maybe you need to shut some doors and just. Mm -hmm. you know,
and, mm. and I love, I wanted to go back to that story of Miriam and Martha that you were talking about earlier. You know, Miriam and Martha. And I, and I love how the story goes because it says that the grouse was not because Mary, Martha was serving. That was not the problem. Uh. The problem was that Martha, she had a priority problem. That, yeah. was, that, was, that was the issue with it. Like, mm. yeah. you need to make room in your life for yes. the purpose of God for your life. So if you have yes. to shut things down, if you have to go back and tell people that you told good morning and say, sorry, there's no longer good morning, I'm going back home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you need to, sometimes you feel like it is a thing of shame. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's embarrassing to go back and yeah. say, they're going to look at you like, are you crazy? You yeah. don't anymore? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we need to actually get over ourselves and say, whatever. I'm yes. going to have to make room in my life for God's plans oh, God. and God's purpose. Yes. So even if you're going to feel like you don't understand me, you don't have to understand me. Yeah. As long as I feel like I'm walking in God's purpose. It is, it is tough. Yeah. It's a tough one. And I'm like, I'm looking at you, I'm like, okay, God has even told me to do something this crazy. So I, I don't know. What am I even crying about? <laughs> well, oh, no. <laughs> you never know. You never know what God does. <laughs> no, I'm scared. You know, he could pull yeah, up anything. And, and it's good that you said make room because one of the songs that blessed me for the first three months of this journey was I'll make, there's this song, I'll make room for you. Mm. Mm. Whatever you want to. Mm. Mm. Whatever mm. you want to. Um, it says, this is where I lay down. Every pride and every, uh, I need to figure out, let me get the words. You really need to, and I would like to say that. And it says, this is my surrender. Um, Purpose is about surrender. Um, mm. It's no longer your will. Um, mm. It is essential. And, and, and when people say purpose, people are thinking always like Christian stuff. Oh, it's, it's, big, it's, it's, it's in business. It's in, it's, yeah. in, in, it's, it's in different things. So don't, yeah. I don't want people to think, oh, it's only becoming a pastor or starting an orphanage. No, it's, yeah. about, it's yeah. about so many other things, right? Mm. It says, here is where I lay down every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. And he says, I'll make room for you to do whatever you want to. Um, and then there's a place it says, um, shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the world walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Um, God's way uh, and it says, you are all I'm chasing now. Yes. So that was the part. It says, you are all I'm chasing now. And the, I just I just started chasing. And God has had me on Psalms 34. There's a part that says, um, God seekers. If you're a God seeker, you're full with God. Mm. When you're a God seeker, you become full with him. And so when you seek God for everything, every decision, I remember not seeking God for my office space. Mm. I remember, um, uh, Nikkei, you had asked me about my office space. Mm -hmm. I, I got that office. I wanted to do grand things with it <laughs> since 2020. Um, it sits there unused and I've been paying every month. Um, and then when I started Bread of Hope, that was one thing I didn't seek God for. And God made sure he whooped me for it. I didn't seek God to fix the flooring and to get the bigger space in the building. And I hired contractors, sunk in about 7,000 something into it. And they met the floor, the amazing floor that was beautiful one day, started swelling up the next day. Um, and the contractor refuses to fix it. And God is like, oh, well, wow. I didn't ask you to do it. So I realized that the things that God didn't want me to do, I wasted money on. I wasted time on. I wasted emotions wow. on. And I lost, it was, it was to my loss. Mm. It was to my loss. And all through this journey, that was one thing. God is like, you see why you need to listen to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. I said $7,500. Now, you know, the, the floor is messed up. I still haven't been able to use the office. Wow. And so it's so important for us that even when we walk in purpose to listen to him for every single decision. Don't think because, okay, now God told me to uh, build a school. You now just start running. And because you may end up, the devil will distract you, but you will hire the wrong person. 
You end up, you know, getting spending money on the wrong curriculum. You end up. So there are so many ways that the devil will now use you, like use that situation to distract you. Then you start doubting that did God actually call me, or you know, did God ask me to do this, or you start regretting, or you start looking for other options. So if you are listening and you're thinking, okay, I know my purpose, so let me just run now and start mm. doing it. Mm. I want to advise you just take time mm. and listen. Yeah. And that's for everything, including should I hire that contractor to fix the floor? Is it even time for me to fix the floor? Yes. Is it that office? Is it that place? Should I get the domain name now yeah. or should yeah. I wait? Yes. Don't yes. think what is then to you is like ten dollars. No, but it's probably mm. not just the right time. Mm. You know, it's just not the right time. And and I have instances of that happening through this journey. And it's like, and God will show you, and you you know, just just listen. For me, God tells, speaks to me through dreams or through things. Listen, however God speaks to you, listen. Mm. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I have my notes. <laughs> I'm gonna think about something. You were shaking. By the way, you were shaking some tables. You didn't even know. Breaking the tables. Breaking oh, the tables. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. And it, it's just amazing because uh, for uh, Olusha and I too, we're kind of in a season where we're pivoting and trying to understand this grand plan. And I'm sure people that have been following us for years are wondering what are these girls. Exactly. Doing? Doing? What, what are they up to and yeah. we ourselves we're like taking it step by step and just following yeah. along because we know his ways are way bigger bigger yeah. and awesome yeah. i love what you yeah. said today and i think that's like my biggest takeaway i wrote something down actually when you guys were talking about uh martha and mary mm -hmm. and i and i just wrote that jesus came to your house so what did you learn because mm -hmm. Just imagine them, you know, having us you know, hosting Jesus and everything. And then, you know, the next day, maybe they're chatting with a friend. I'm like, oh, Jesus even came back to my house. And then they look at Martha and say, okay, Jesus did come back to your house. What did you learn? What I was did you thinking, learn? No, we're we taking they pictures. Love, we they love my, yeah, they love my food. They're like, you need to take a picture. And they'll be like, oh, <laughs> did you hear about the lady that just took the hand of his garment and got healing? You didn't think about that? You didn't think about sharing your, you know, I can just imagine, you know, that conversation like, so... You were just cooking and cleaning, like as you yeah. do. <laughs> and sometimes when we're comfortable, we don't think we need to learn. Yeah. When yeah. we're, and, when and we're, and it's pride too, because my friend's like, yeah, but it's Jesus, and I'm like, oh, okay. yeah, I yeah. know him. Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's, like, he's like my brother's friend. I got no big deal. You yeah. Know? Mm. And then, and then Mary will probably come out with a huge journal with, let me tell you what I learned. Mm. So mm. we all, I feel like for every one of us listening, we've all had that moment where we had that encounter, where yeah. something dropped in our heart. And I love what you said you did right away. You called a friend that you could trust yeah. and you guys mm. prayed together. You didn't yeah. call people that would kill the dreams. Let's be honest. Sometimes we get some ideas and we know the people that we can call that will oh, kill yeah. the dreams. Oh, and yeah. we call those people because we need that dream to be killed. To be killed. Yeah, say me. But I'm like, okay, well, I didn't want to do it in the first place. We'll just leave ourselves. I'm not just calling this person, but you know why you're calling that person. I need a list of why not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and so we all know the right thing to do. We all know the right person or the right community or the right person to connect with. And mm. connecting with that person, I'm praying and fully leaning on God every single step of the way. Because one thing you just kept saying that just like was resonating with me is we're creators and we're intelligent people. Mm. And sometimes we want to infuse our own vibes into it, we want to infuse our own flavor or our own ways of doing things into it. And it may, yes. not, it may not be part of the plan. You know, yes. Plan. So being vulnerable, you know, I wrote it down. Surrender. I even mm. designed it beautifully. Me can surrender. Being vulnerable surrender. for, especially for people that are already even on the journey of purpose, being vulnerable enough to let God guide you. I have a yeah. lot of takeaways. I feel like people should put their takeaways in the comments as well. If I yeah. write mine, I'm going to write a book. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, I, I don't know where I want to start from. Is it? Is it the? Is it the one she didn't say that I'm already saying to myself? Like. I'm like, okay, this is what I take away from this, this center because God is saying to you, do you see now? Do you see now? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear so you. Much. Okay, because I think someone was yeah, trying to call on Messenger. Yeah. Then it, it, my you. volume went down. Yeah. Okay, good. Me. 
Yeah, so um, I like I, I've used an hour. <laughs> We've used an hour for uh -huh. sure. So let me know when uh, you if that? this I is it. I looked up and I can't even believe that we've used up an exactly. hour. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> look at her. She's still listening. She's like, go on. I'm like, please, I'm here. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so oh, um, this is amazing. if you're I here can't... and you you discouraged because you know i would hate to tell i would hate to just leave this without mentioning that there have been days where i questioned mm -hmm. um there have been days where i was scared um but there i've had more updates up days than the down days mm -hmm. and i think about the kids because anytime god says it's not about you you know mm -hmm. Mm. then all of that makes sense. So I'm okay. It's okay. I could deal with this. I can hold on. And the work hasn't even started. Again, yeah. we just have this 100-acre land. Um, we're working on the design and fen trying to get the fence up. Mm. Um, there's still a long journey <laughs> ahead. Mm. Mm. Um, but my daily walk with God right now is just really being strengthened because when you're in a place of purpose, that's not when you need to start backtracking and wanting to learn things you should have learned mm. from the foundation. Mm. So this is my learning season. This is my growing season, learning how to be patient, how mm. to, um, to be kind, how to be maybe more open mm. about how I feel and mm. not, pretend that I'm perfect or everything is perfect or I have it all together. Mm. Um, and so I've been using most of my time taking things in, learning, and also pouring out. Yeah. Um, so with my platform, God Love and Jalof, I just sort of share, you know, my spiritual journey or, you know, share some, if I read a scripture, I think it's great. I share mm. it. Um, and she's trying to build a community of people who just want to hear the simplicity of loving God because mm. there's so much fluff out there about God. And it's so like, I'm not into that. I, mm. my servant of God is so simple and quiet. I don't like the heavy, like too, too much fluff. Mm. Um, so for me right now, it's just a growing season mm. and, the work is going to start and it's going to be a hundred miles per hour. Mm. And at that mm. point, it's not time for me to start to now mm. say, okay, now I need to learn the foundations of how to act as a, mm. you know, this or so mm. when you build in purpose, you, you take that time to learn, mm. to sit down and listen, because when you in the journey, imagine you're now the seed living boldly is like now, like, the number one mm -hmm. something is that is that what you want to start learning how to mm -hmm. you know what i mean like how to behave uh, <laughs> how to behave and mm -hmm. how to be patient and how to mm -hmm. deal with employees or mm -hmm. you know because you're no longer the one trying to do all the work and i love mm -hmm. the name living boldly i love mom university it's brilliant and what you guys are putting together or what you've put together is complete i was blown by it so and it's so beautifully done <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and I see it inspiring so many people um, and encouraging people to live boldly because I think people are scared to live boldly. People mm. are scared to live out loud mm. and people are afraid of what will people say, you know, um, for the first time in my life, I typically don't care about what people say, but for the first time, I just, I don't know. I don't care like mm -hmm. about what people say so when when uh Alicia was saying or oh, maybe they would think you're crazy because you did, i said oh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter like i don't you know it, it's okay you know i had to change all my profiles on twitter instagram linkedin you know um i had to just i'm like okay it is who i am some people are you know the amazing thing some people are silent mm -hmm. like close family some people just are acting like they don't even see it wow. and the other day i was telling my husband i was like hmm, it's interesting that this person or that person hasn't even said a word said anything uh but typically when i put up foolishness they're very quite <gasps> um, vocal um 
and it's been months so it's it is it you know um and it's like they are they are avoiding it and mm. i'm not sure why i don't really mm. care but i think when i mentioned it god now said does it really matter mm. <laughs> mm. like are you waiting for man's approval mm. um mm. so so for me updating it is just one of those things yes it's a bit for for a business woman it's like okay you know but i had to realize that this is my new life now yeah. um that so when when you know that this is your new life and you're all in it doesn't really matter you know um i mean i see you guys putting together like amazing programs to help women live boldly and and men mm. live boldly mm. um pushing them you know to their limits like mm. saying you could do this okay how can you make Twenty thousand dollars a month, and mm. we're going to do it this month. Mm. You, you know, not just fluff on paper, but like mm. really putting together things that inspire people. Mm. You know, someone who has never traveled the world, pushing them to be able to do that. I mean, living boldly, not just on paper. Or yeah, mm. all of us live boldly on social media. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we're all very like but bold. Don't you know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but just really pushing people in a way that um, challenges them to be better. I think there's no greater gift or no greater purpose. That was what Jesus was about. He, mm -hmm. you know, he said. So Peter like have you caught anything all day the dude was sitting at the thing he didn't catch anything all day i'm sure the wife was ready like ah we are going to get fish today ah we are going to chop and, and she's also waiting for that money dude is sitting there no fish just sitting mm -hmm. dude is why and then when jesus was like mm -hmm. he's like hey, i have not caught anything i'm just sitting here he's like but i can show you something better than <laughs> catching fish mm -hmm. you know and then wow. he still caught fish, right? He caught so much that they didn't have room for it. But guess what? God is like, leave it. Because mm. I, I can show you that. It's just a dot. Don't sit on it. <laughs> the dot. Imagine if he said, ah, look at all this fish. Oh, I've never even gotten this much fish in my life. I'm going to open and, a fish company right now. <laughs> yeah. Barbecue. So that's what I'm going <laughs> fish, <laughs> fish, fish, you know, open a restaurant, open a fishing school, a coaching school to teach fishermen how to fish better. Like, you need to look at my report. I caught how many fish that day, uh -huh. and then she, all of that. I can show you how. I can show you how. <laughs> With $9.99 plus tax. And there's an e-book that comes with it. Um, <laughs> and God is, God is like, no, you know, I can show you something better. Oh, wow. So that's it. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I just want to sit here and just soak it in. Oh, my God. I mean, I feel so blessed by all that you've shared um, because you. it's like you've just taken the journey that a lot of us are on and, you know, just sharing your own story and your own journey has just been a, a way for people to just say, oh, I see myself in there. Oh, I see myself in here. And all the things that we've shared today, and I hope that someone is listening, um, don't, feel, don't feel like you have to have it all together mm. before you can make a move, right? Mm. Mm. Just make that move where you are because mm. the world is counting on you. You know, there are people that are attached to your life and your destiny that mm. you don't even know. Sometimes you think that it's about me. So if I, if I don't show up, it's okay. It's not okay because you're not the only one. You are not the only one nope. who's connected to this purpose. There are other people, other lives that need to be touched by you. So get up and do something. Live boldly. And I wrote, and I wrote that down. Live out loud. L-O-L. Okay, <laughs> Live. It's about to be my new hashtag. <laughs> yes. Live out loud. loud. Not just on paper. Mm. Not just on social media, posting and posting every day, but you know, do the work of yeah. transforming lives with what you do. Wow, wow! Yeah. So good. Thank you so much. I have I have my own hashtag. I wrote, "I am living boldly." Hashtag, and I and I put it up for myself. Yeah. And and I me and I too. And me I, too. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. And it's it's a, it's it, it's easy to say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But then his grace is sufficient. Let's just put it that yeah. way. His yeah. grace is sufficient. So thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you so much. I wish I could keep you on. But then I, I want to say we, we have to have a part two sometime, sometime, sometime soon, you know, another well, part of the journey. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, there's there's so much that, you know, you shared today that I feel like 
we need to we need to stay on it a bit longer mm. but um yes mm. yes everybody's like leave out loud, leave out loud. Yeah, that's leave loud. Loud. yeah that's yeah. Loud. That must that's be my new um, you know tagline yeah. Mm -hmm. hashtag yeah that's true and just saying yes and leaving that life of surrender and that's what we're trying yes. to really help people here at living boldly like hey there's a call on your life step into yes. it get the right resources yes. get the right tools and step straight into it so yes uh, i don't know yes. if you have any last words <laughs> vivian i know yeah, you're doing a lot I've of said, i've said everything okay thank you so much alicia i don't thank know you, you thank any. you <laughs> yeah, I, 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 so I just much. wanted to ask her though, like if I mean, I, maybe people want to follow her and just check out how do how can people support what you're doing? Um, mm. In what um, way can people support you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a website for Bread of Hope. It's breadhopelife.org. Um, mm -hmm. I maybe think I could type it in. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess with the phone. Um, <laughs> breadhopelife.org. Um, you could send a donation there um you could also we have a nigerian account if you're mm. nigerian you want to do that i could i don't have that information mm. um but you can support in mm. any way we're also looking for partners organizations that could also help with the children we have something called uh c-i-l-l -L. it's a program for teenagers to learn different skills not mm -hmm. just like tapping tree or so you know sewing but different skills from tech um so even things like speaking and all of that mm -hmm. uh, so you could as a company or an organization you could also partner with us we're also partnering with uh non-profit organizations or churches um to support so there are so many ways you could lend your skill or your skill set to help to volunteer or to also like donate but most importantly pray Mm -hmm. we need prayer um more than anything else um so you could always just go to the website and see the different ways that your company or your organization or you as an individual can help out uh we're doing that trip across africa that god is leading me to and we're still gathering the details mm -hmm. um that will probably be made available online so if anybody wants to like join us and global trapped also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm um feel free as well yeah mm, awesome thank you thank you for sharing that i mean i checked out the website is like oh the first thing i saw there was pray you know how you can partner mm. with us pray i was like this is yeah. such a phenomenal thing because sometimes people forget that like what nikki was saying a few days ago that we think prayer is like okay i'll pray for you like it's the least you can do no it's actually the most the best thing you can give yeah, someone it is, is. To pray for them because all the resources of heaven back that prayer up when you pray for yeah. people yeah. Awesome. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Thank you for I'm having so... me. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. And, you know, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. And then we'll be here back tomorrow again. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> Same time. Meet Same us here. Time. We're going to be online. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>